Our goal today is to calculate and plot the split velocity, split acceleration, average velocity, and average acceleration over the 50 meter sprint. So first of all, we need to discuss what is split velocity. Split velocity is simply the amount of time it took to run over each of these 10 meter intervals that we have. These time intervals were measured with timing gates, so we can be relatively certain that they're reliable. For starters, let's calculate split velocity. Since we know that each of the splits is going to be 10 meters, we can actually just enter our displacement of 10 meters divided by our split time. And fill that down by double clicking in the right corner. Next, let's take a look at our average velocity. So the average velocity is going to be the total displacement divided by the total time. In this case, since we are only given split time, it's easiest to make a new column for total time. To calculate the total time, we can add each split time into a cumulative column. So here we'll add our starting point of zero seconds plus our split time. And now when we fill down, and now when we fill down, we can see that it's actually adding the previous sum plus the new split time. We call this a cumulative sum. So if we want to compare and make sure that we're correct here, we can just sum these points and looks like we've done a good job. So now for average velocity, we're just going to divide the total displacement by the total time. Now we can fill down this data as well. Now let's tackle acceleration. So our split acceleration is gonna be the change in our split velocity over each of the 10 meter splits. So here we'll go V1 minus V0, and we're gonna put this in brackets. So change in velocity divided by the split time. We can fill this down. And as we go down the column, we can see that it is in fact taking the difference between V1, V0, and our split time. For average acceleration, we're simply gonna take the average velocity divided by the total time. Next, let's make a graph. In this case, we're mostly going to be interested in graphing what happens over each distance. Let's look at our distance and our split velocity, as well as our average velocity at the same time. We can go up to insert, and in this case, let's choose a smooth scatter. We'll quickly add some axis labels. And let's do the same for acceleration. One semester later. Now we can take a quick look at what happens to our split versus average velocity and our split versus average acceleration. Looking at both our sprint velocity and acceleration, we can see a rapid change in the first 10 meters. Going from a standstill to running is going to be a rapid acceleration. In this case, we can see we accelerated at uh, about 5.6 meters per second squared. And over about 12 meters, we were accelerating very rapidly and then we started to accelerate a little more slowly. We still have a positive acceleration, but between 10 and 20 meters, we're only having a change in acceleration of about 0.43 meters per second squared. That means we're gonna be holding a relatively constant velocity. And we see that if we look at our velocity graph, we have a very rapid change in velocity that pretty much levels off around the 20 meter mark, and we maintain that. We can see 
if we look across our split acceleration, that as we cross the 40 meter mark, we're actually starting to decelerate. And if we look at our split velocity, we see that corresponding deceleration here. Now looking at average versus splits gives us a bit of a different story. We can look at our change overall with our average velocity and see that overall we accelerated from our standstill all the way through to the end of the race with a final average acceleration of about 1.27 meters per second squared. However, what that doesn't tell us is what happens between each of those 10 meter segments. And this can give us a bit more information for coaching. For instance, we can see that we have a very sharp drop off in our acceleration between 10 and 20 meters. And that's likely something that this athlete could improve upon. Additionally, we would expect the athlete to maintain a positive acceleration until at least the 60 meter mark. And so in this case, we have a deceleration at around 40 meters. And that's again, something that we could work towards improving. One of the advantages of visualizing your split and average accelerations is it can really help you to realize the points at which an athlete has room for improvement.